Why, well, hello there, my internet friends. My name is John Jagsney, and I am very excited to be sharing with you a workflow from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine based on a scene done by my good friend EJ Hassenfratz from iDesign.com and School of Motion. He designed a really fun looking scene in Redshift with his pug, and my challenge is to bring it into Unreal Engine and remake that and I'm going to be showing you that process. So let's go into cinema first and start that whole workflow. Now this one will be a little bit of a long one and I might even break it up into a couple of parts. We'll see as I record this. But we have our scene here that EJ was so kind to share with me. And well, I shouldn't move this slider, but if I undo that, if I were to navigate around my scene, we can see that based on the source, it is a scene with a little bit of a landscape. We have some trees. There's definitely going to be some grass in it now in the file that he shared with me. He didn't give me all of the textures and all the original assets because it would have been huge. So he just gave me the base that I'm going to be working with and bringing that into Unreal Engine. Now, here's one of the big kickers about this workflow. Because I don't have any of the textures, we have to get all of the stuff and sort of kit bash things together. So how's that going to work? Well, we're just going to go to the Unreal Marketplace and Megascans to make all of that happen. So the first thing we, that we have to do is we need to bring this scene into Unreal Engine. And to start that, we need to do a couple of things in Cinema first. So to prep this file for Unreal Engine, the first thing we have to do is set this up for Cineware. Now, if you were to do this, basically what that's telling Cinema is like bake things down so that it saves it within the project file. So you're going to hit Control D on your keyboard and then you're going to go to the Cineware tab and check save polygon cache, save animation cache, just, just check everything. That's how you can bring it into Unreal Engine. Now, I will warn you, if you have a very large scene, this will dramatically increase your file size. So be, be warned of that. Once that's done, go to your project. I'm going to set it to 24, just because I like working in 24 frames. And then go to your render settings, and then make sure this is set to 1920 by 1080 for the width and height. And then you want to go to your frame rate and set that to 24. Once that's done, you're good to go. I'm going to increment and save, so Control alt and s and that's going to save an iterative copy because I've already done some practice of this, so I'm going to let that save for a moment. So I'm saving this project iteratively because I have done some practice and tests on this to make sure it would work. So while it saves, I'm going to open up Unreal Engine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my folder directly where my Unreal Engine project is right over here uh, in my folder. I could also go to the Epic Games launcher, but it doesn't show up sometimes because I have this saved in a weird space. So I'm just going to open up Unreal Engine by double clicking on my project file here. And then on my other monitor, we have all of this here. And you can see my practice. So this looks pretty good and this is the outcome we're going to be looking for so why don't we start with a clean blank slate and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into our all folder go into our content for our project now the content browser in unreal engine is kind of like the asset browser or like your windows explorer where you save things and it makes it ready for unreal now, what I'm going to do is open up a level. A level is kind of where you do uh, your scene, basically. Think of it like a video game level. So you just add stuff to the level. But it all lives in this client, Unreal Engine. So I'm going to right click and then click on level. Now, I've already done this. So I'm just going to go to my nature bash scene tutorial. And we can see that we have a very, very empty scene. Obviously, we need to bring in the Cinema 4D file. So the first thing you have to do if you've not done this before is enable your Cinema 4D plugin. So the way that works is you're going to go to Settings, Plugins, and then in your Plugins search bar, you're going to search up the 
C4D plugin. This is the plugin you are looking for, the Cinema 4D Datasmith importer thing. You're gonna check that and then it will ask you to restart Unreal Engine. Make sure you do that. And then once that's done, we can go to our quickly add to the project and Datasmith file import. Now my Cinema 4D file is done saving and I'm going to close that. Don't need Cinema anymore. Let's not make my computer hate itself by having too many things open at once. I'm gonna navigate to my project files in the folder. I know exactly where it is. And just to demonstrate, this is a file that is 891 megabytes. It's almost a gigabyte for a very large scene. Probably would be more if I had all of the materials and textures and objects, but that's fine, just be warned. We're gonna go to this, double click. It's gonna ask you, where would you like to import? your file. Now I already have one here, but I'm importing the second version. So I can just click OK. If you want to put it in its own folder, you can also do that. But I'm just going to click OK on the content. And it's going to ask me, do I want to bring in all of this stuff? Generally speaking, you'll want to click Yes, check everything. You don't really need to worry about any of this stuff here and click Import. Now you're going to let that load for just a second. And once that's done, typically takes about a minute or so for a large scene like this. It's working in the background, so we'll be back in just a second when that starts. All right, so we have our scene from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine, and we can see that there's something here. There's definitely something. So if you've never used Unreal Engine before, you can hold right click on your mouse like so. And then if you use your WASD keys like a video game, you can navigate around. Now what are we seeing what's happening well unfortunately at the time of this recording in may 2022 cinema 4d uses redshift or you could use standard um, but the project file i was using was using redshift and all of the redshift objects materials etc do not translate over correctly into unreal engine so this is why we have to build a lot of this stuff manually Pro tip, if you do stuff in standard, it will work most of the time. There's some other hiccups, but uh, Redshift does not work, so we're going to end up rebuilding a lot of this. So let's take a look at what we have. We obviously have our scene with some lights. Their orientation is a little weird, but that's okay. We got our little pug character. He's already in here, but we need to start removing stuff so we can see our scene. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top of my outliner here and your outliner is kind of like your object manager in Cinema 4D and I'm going to just see what I'm looking at. It has my lights, it has my plants, it has the trees. So I know I'm going to be replacing pretty much everything. So I'm going to select the plants parent here and hit control alt D and then control alt D again. And that's going to select all of the children in that hierarchy. And I'm gonna delete. I don't want that, goodbye. Then I'm gonna scroll and go through the rocks and trees. Same thing, select all the children, select all the children and delete. Now to save you some time, I'm just gonna do this really quick. All right, so after just a couple minutes, all of the trees are gone. We have this base landscape here. There's some other ferns and stuff, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So now what I want to do is I want to start getting rid of the lighting. I want to start with a clean slate. So I'm going to get rid of my redshift sky and sun. I'm actually going to get rid of all the lighting. I really don't want to do all of this. I could keep this if I wanted to have like a, a base reference for the lights, but I kind of know what the look should be based on this. So I'm going to try and recreate that with Unreal Engine tools. So delete all the lights. And we're going to add some base lighting to start. And generally speaking, I like to start with creating sort of a, an environment like in the day. So let's start with the sky. So we're going to go to our place actors panel here. And we're going to search up sky. And we're going to look up a blueprint sky sphere. Now, what we can see is now we have a little bit of a sky. And what's really cool about this is we can change the sun height. So it sort of matches what 
uh, day and night would do, uh, sunset, sunrise, etc. So that's there. And then after that, I'm going to add a directional light. And think of your directional light like your sun, basically. So now we have this here. And generally speaking, in Unreal, it will bring the intensity in at 10. But according to like natural values, 3.14 is like the, the default setting for what we would see naturally. So I'm just going to set this to 3.14 just to start, but we might end up changing this down the line. So I have my base directional light. Now I'm going to add a skylight. A skylight is uh, basically going to help create a lot of that ambient light and that fill light. So in my place actors panel, I'll look up a skylight and just drop that in. And there's a couple settings we need to change on the skylight. First off, we're going to go to our sky distance threshold and set this to one. I'm going to set this to movable and I'm going to scroll down to my lower hemisphere solid color and uncheck that. Now it still looks really blown out and gross. We do need to add some materials, but there's one more thing I want to add to the scene and that is going to be some fog. So first let's add a environmental. How about just fog? There we go. Exponential height fog, excuse me, not environmental. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change a couple settings in this. We're going to change the fog in scattering color. Make sure this is set to black. Then we're going to go to our directional scat in scattering color and set that to black. We're going to check on volumetric fog. And that should be good to go for now. I'm going to go to my directional light and I'm going to scroll through the settings. And I'm going to make sure I turn on my atmosphere sunlight and the reason why you do this is now if you hit control l on your keyboard what it will do is allow you to change the position of the directional light based on the mouse so if you're holding control l then you can sort of like really dial in that light so okay now we're getting somewhere we're getting some cool looking shadows and whatnot the last thing i want to add for the lighting to get us started is a post process volume so i'm going to look up post process volume drag that into my scene a post process volume is basically like adding a final visual effect to your scene and anything within the post process volume will get all of those really cool looking effects like bloom or ray tracing or all the fun stuff that you would want to really bring those renders to life so add my post process volume to the scene and in the search bar of the post process volume i'm going to type unb and i basically want this little cube to affect everything so when we search UNB, we can find infinite extend. It will envelop the entire scene. So now what we can do is we can go into our bloom. We can turn that on. We can crank up the intensity if we want. We'll get a different look, but we'll dial some of these settings in in just a little bit. Now what I want to do is make sure I have some project settings set up so that we can get the best looking render. Now, what I'm going to be doing is a combination between using the real-time tools like Lumen and ray tracing. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat in Unreal, and sometimes if it looks good in the engine, it's just going to look good. So let's go with that. First, we're going to go to Edit and Project Settings. And in your Project Settings, you're going to type Ray. And if you find the Use Hardware Ray Tracing when available, make sure you check that. Make sure you check ray trace shadows, support hardware ray chasing, etc. Uh, then we're going to type global. And then right now I have my dynamic global illumination set to lumen. You could also set it to ray tracing if you want, but I'm again trying to do a mixture of both for this render because I want this to be in real time. Last thing I want to look up is reflections. And we can see here that it's set to lumen but you could also set this to ray tracing whatever floats your boat so now i have my sort of base set up for the lighting of the scene and we'll dial this in a little bit later because it still obviously looks gross but now i want to add some materials and plants and textures to this to bring this to life. So the first thing we're gonna do is one of the coolest parts about Unreal Engine. The Megascans Quixel Bridge 
library is built directly in the Unreal Engine. So if I go to the little cube plus sign up here, we can click on Quixel Bridge, and then we can see that, hey, look, here is the default Quixel Bridge menu. And what's really cool is you can search up all kinds of things like stone. And you can find some textures and you can add all of these things. Now the library assets that I'm using today are gonna be all using Nanite, the highest quality possible. Bear in mind that these file sizes are relatively large, so make sure you have enough space on your computer. So the way you would find something is find what you like, click on it, set the quality that you want, hit download, and then you would just simply add it to your scene. Now, I've already downloaded a bunch of these assets for my tests, so I can go to my local folder here, and we can see everything that I have. Now, if I wanted to bring something into my Unreal Engine project, I would go to my local and then click on the Add button. All of this stuff is already in my scene at the moment, and when you go to your content folder and then your mega scans folder. We can see we have three different folders, our 3D assets, 3D plants, and surfaces. We're gonna start off with the surface. Now, I did notice a little bug when I brought in this first asset. The name of it was Tundra Stone for some reason, and uh, I just know that this is actually a mossy floor asset. So if I navigate here, I know it's gonna be this guy right here. So I went in and made sure this looked like mossy floor, totally does. And then I'm gonna take the material, which is effectively the 3D asset, and I'm gonna drag this onto my ground. So with my ground selected, I could either just click and drag here, or I can drag onto material slot over here. Now, that's already set up and good to go. Sometimes when you work with an Unreal file and the material is gonna be too large, you can double click on the material instance and then you can go to your tiling. And what's really cool about this is now I can change the tiling to let's say one comma one and now it's much larger, but we're also losing some detail. I'm gonna keep this at let's say five five because that actually looks better that way. Cool. So once that's done, I have the first set up for my landscape. Now I know that this empty section here, this path, I want that to be some stone. In the render, it, I believe it was some stone. So we're gonna go to the temple stone, not that one, that would be this one. And I'm just gonna drag that onto my object. So it is a little big here. I actually wanna tune it down so I can double click on that, go to my tiling and go to 20 comma 20 makes it a little bit smaller, more manageable. Otherwise, those those giant stones would be huge and hard to carry. Let's say uh, 40, 40? Yeah, that's looking good. Cool. Next, I'm gonna get rid of all of these ferns here. I don't need them. So I'm just gonna scroll up and boop, boop. Get rid of that. Oh, wow, there's quite a lot of them. Let's just go in and get rid of all of this. Now what you're looking at is that whenever you have like a cloner object or a scatter object in Cinema 4D, it will bring in each object individually. So Unreal is uh, cool like that rather than having clones. It's just like, yeah, we can handle all of the stuff, no problem. So I'm gonna delete those. And now we have our base scene. We have our lighting here, but we're not gonna worry about that at the moment. Next, what we wanna do is add some foliage, some grass. If you look at the base render, there was definitely some little clover things in the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my modes here in the top left-hand corner, and I'm gonna select foliage. Now, if I go to my mega scans and I go to my 3D plants, I can see I have three different 3D plants here. The wood sorrel is kind of like a clover and I kind of want that to envelop everything. So I'm lazy and uh, sometimes the cloner object in cinema is procedural, but it can be a lot of buttons to press. And I don't mind buttons, but I know sometimes it's just easier to paint. And what's really cool about Unreal Engine is I can go into my foliage and select all of my wood sorrel 
foliage folder, bring all of this into my foliage editor up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all of this. So I select the first one, hold shift, select the last one. And then I'm going to go into my properties of my mesh, scooch down my windows just a little bit. And I'm going to change the scaling. I'm going to reset that and I'm going to set the scaling to 0.8 and 1.2. And then I'm going to change the uh, ground slope angle. I'm just going to change this to, let's say 180 just to start. And then I'm going to go into all of these objects here with them selected, right click and activate. So now I have this blue orb in my scene wherever my mouse is and I can just start painting. Hey, look, how cool is that? We can start adding some really cool looking clover stuff to the scene. Now I am realizing that it's uh, it's not as dense as I want it to be. So I'm going to reset the density and then I'm going to set this to let's say what 200. Let's just start with that. See what happens. Maybe 500. I want this to be really thick as if it's like enveloping the entire ground floor. So let's just keep painting, keep painting. Doo -doo -doo. And we're just adding this wood sorrel all over the place. Sound effects not included. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And I'm pretty close to done. And you can also change your brush size by moving this slider up and down here. And I wanna get a little bit closer into this detail so I can just bring down the brush size and scroll that down there we go that's looking good looking good awesome so that's going to be my stopping point for this section i might come back and revisit it but we have thousands of wood sorrel in the scene now and it is super cool now a good rule of thumb whenever you're doing something like this and you're working with a cinema file is you can go to your perspective and we can see we have a redshift camera here we can actually click on that and see what we're looking at and i'd say that's a good starting point for our composition we're getting little patches of dirt and the sorrel in there that's good enough for me add just a touch more and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to eject from my camera up here and I want to start adding the next layer of plants. So I'm going to go back to my 3D plants folder here and I can see I have some ferns and I have some broadleaf. So I'm going to start with the ferns, go into my foliage and then I'm going to I'm going to bring my content browser up here really quick just so it's a little bit easier to navigate and see my viewport. And I'm going to take all of these lady fern foliage objects, click and drag into my foliage folder and add this foliage. I'm going to select all of the wood sorrel that I just had and then deactivate. I'm going to click on my ferns and I'm going to right click and activate. So now if I were to paint in some stuff, I can start adding these ferns across the board and because these plants are a little bit larger i want to be subtle with this i want to really just add just a couple patches of them as if like that's just where they were planted or where nature just decided to put them and i'm gonna make my brush size a little bit bigger and i'll just put some patches back here and just gently tap around my scene and our camera is not looking over here, but I just feel like designing the level as if uh, I was going to play it just like a video game. So let's let's just build all of it. So that might be a good starting point. Let's click on our perspective, redshift camera, and we can see now we're getting that sort of look of the ferns. It's looking pretty lush and uh, that's pretty awesome if I do say so myself. Now, the next thing I want to add are some trees. So in Unreal, you can find tons of really great assets on the Unreal Marketplace. So uh, I'm going to use a tree pack that I have from the Unreal Marketplace. 
So with the Unreal Marketplace, you can find a lot of really cool assets. I have a very large library because I've been using the Unreal Engine for about two years now. So I kind of just have picked stuff up over time. But I'm going to be using this Stone Pine Forest. And I'll just be taking these trees that are in the scene and adding them to the scene I'm working on now. So you would just add that to your project and then you could start adding trees. So I'm going to navigate to my content browser again, go to my content. And I know it's not in mega scans because it is a separate pack. So I'm going to go to my stone pine forest and then go to meshes and find my trees, stone pines. So I could either just go to my select mode and start adding trees manually, but why don't I add some foliage instead? So in my stone pine forest, I'm going to navigate to my world spawner folder. And depending on the asset pack that you pick up from the Unreal Marketplace, the folder structure might be a little different. So just, just browse through and see what you have. So I have all of these trees here. I'm going to select these trees. And then I'm going to select these trees down here and just kind of just make sure I add all of them, all kinds of trees. Cool. I'm going to go to my select mode and then foliage, go back to my content browser, drag all of this over into my foliage section. And then I'm going to select all of my lady ferns and right click and deactivate. Then I'm going to go to my first set of trees. You know what, we're gonna stick with these trees. I don't like these ones down here, right click and activate. Make sure we change the scale. So I want the scale to be like one to two, just to start and let's see what happens. Now I do know that the density of these is gonna be really high and there's trees, there's a lot of trees. So instead of having a super, super dense brush, what I want to do is uh, make sure that uh, I'm only painting trees subtly. You don't wanna have trees on top of each other. Now I do realize I moved my Redshift camera. That's totally fine. We'll fix that in just a little bit. But now in foliage mode, I have my trees and I'm going to just start adding. And we can see these trees are very, very close together. And that is not what I want. So I'm gonna set the density of all of this, maybe the paintbrush density to 0 0.01. There we go. That's exactly what I want. And I can just start patching in these trees in my scene. Boop. That's a huge tree. And just start painting and painting and adding these trees. And this is much, much faster than Bob Ross would do it. So uh, thanks, technology. That's you make my life so great. Just adding these trees around and boop, building out this scene. Now I'm gonna go back to my select mode really quick and see that I have this plane here. I don't want that, that's just been there for a little bit. Go back to my foliage mode and add these trees. And the design process is really just building it out like a video game level. So this is getting very, very close to done. Let's add a touch more in this section here. And now what I'm gonna do is go to my Redshift camera. I realize we're actually missing some trees over here. Boop. And we can see we have pretty thick tree coverage. Let's just add a little bit more. And I'm gonna bring down my brush size and make sure I add a couple right in there. So now if I go to my perspective and redshift camera, we can see we're kind of all over the place. I'm going to go into my select mode and see where I'm at. And uh, because it is a very long telephoto lens, like an 80 millimeter, it's looking, it's kind of hard to navigate. So one of the cool things about when you import from cinema into Unreal Engine is it will save any animation. And in the reference, there was an animation. So fortunately, if I double click on my Nature Bash folder two, and then go to my animations folder, I can see this level sequence. It's basically uh, my animation tools. And my animation is gonna be in here. And if I were to go to my Redshift camera, and I'm already in, our camera is back where it started. And we have the camera move that was originally in the shot. 
And now this is starting to look really cool. We're getting this really cool looking uh, scene. We got some trees in the background. It's a little dark at the moment, which we're gonna fix in just a little bit. But I do wanna leave my camera and add a little bit more trees. I want to create uh, this gap of trees here. I just wanna fill that in. So I'm gonna go to my foliage mode again. And then I'm gonna actually change the size of these trees to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna go to my selection of trees, boop, and then change the size from one to 0.8. So the minimum size of the tree is gonna be 0.8 and the maximum is gonna be one. And then let's just click on our single mode here and start slowly adding trees. So and rather than painting them in, we're just like clicking them into the scene. Pretty good. Let's go to our redshift camera again. Still not as thick as I want it to. So I'm just gonna go here, go to the very end and just like click, 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 click. And these trees would probably never be this close together, but based on the composition of the shot that we're looking for, no one's gonna know. So once that's there, let's go one more time. That's what I wanted. I wanted this to be a little bit thicker as it, as if it's a very like hidden forest, maybe like in Breath of the Wild or something like that where it looks very mysterious. Obviously it's very dark now. So we have our foliage set up in the scene. Now I'm gonna start adding some extra bits to bring the light back. First go to our select mode and then we're gonna go to our post-process volume. Now, this is something we're gonna be really dialing in. So first we're gonna go to our exposure metering mode. We're gonna check exposure compensation, your min and max, and then we're gonna set this to basic. Now from here, what we can do is we can set the min to zero and the max to zero and then we can change the exposure compensation up and down. And now we're getting a very, very different look. We're bringing some light back into the scene. Now this point light that was from the original Redshift project is uh, bothering me, so goodbye. And now we're getting a really cool looking look. And that path is actually getting lost a little bit. So I'm gonna bring it up and I know I'm deviating from the original source file just a little bit. You know, actually we'll keep that there but uh, I could theoretically bring it up. It's very, very dark still. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move my directional light around. And this is one of those situations where there is so much tree coverage that it's a little hard to see what's happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to leave my uh, camera mode and I'm gonna start deleting some trees. So the cool part about the foliage tool is you can also take away, unlike in painting where you would have to uh, sort of work with your mistakes, you can just be like, no, there's too many trees and I don't want this many trees. So with my erase tool selected, I can just make sure that I have my trees there and I can just start getting rid of that stuff, getting rid of some of these guys. Boop. Boop, boop. Boop. And that's gonna bring a lot more light into our scene. That's gonna be that tree. And the reason why I got rid of that one is, yes, it's gonna be way overexposed and blown out now, but now I can very specifically art direct this shot where I, where do I want the light to be? So I'm gonna to go to my single mode and then I'm going to go to my tree and just find a tree that would help give me the shadow I want. That looks pretty good. Just add another here, another here. And the goal is to make sure that the character is gonna get enough light to stand out, but not get lost in shadow. So I'd say that looks pretty good. Let's go into our redshift camera. Oh, there's a tree directly in front of our camera. So that's not good. So we could just go to erase and bring down our size and say goodbye. And then maybe we'll put this tree right here and maybe put a tree right here. And then we're gonna get that kind of looks. Not, no tree right there. Maybe I will put it right back here. Too big tree. Boop, boop. 
and I'm gonna put it right there right here yeah that's gonna look good I think yeah that that's looking fun I'm really happy with with the way the tree coverage is looking so now I'm gonna go into my select mode and in the original source file there's definitely some extra assets so one of the cool parts about the mega scans library is that i have other 3d assets so i have let's say this japanese stone and i can double click on that and just drag it into the scene i can put it wherever i want to i could have obviously used the original reference file but um, we can just put that right there to start now, obviously, it's a little dark, so we might need to get rid of those trees that we just added, or we can just take the creative liberty and put it right there instead. I'd say that looks pretty good. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add a mossy embankment, and we can just double-click and add this to our scene. And I'm going to leave my camera and just position this along the path, almost as if, like, a, a tree kind of fell in the scene, and I'm just going to just Put that in place right there. Maybe hit R on my keyboard and I'll bring up my scale tool, hold control and then scale up just a little bit. And then I'd say that looks pretty good where that is. Maybe I'll bring it up just a touch. And then I'm gonna go to my foliage tool and then I'm gonna go to my ferns and just check this one for now and uncheck my trees. Boop, deactivate, activate you guys. And then I'm just gonna paint a couple. No, nope, don't want that tree. Don't want that tree, turn off. Boop, boop, cool. And I'm just adding a couple extra little ferns there just so that that little bit doesn't get cut off. But I realized that it, we actually don't get those edges. But what I will do is add a fern in the foreground there. That's looking pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Now, it's obviously really blown out in this spot here, and that's probably because some of the lights from the original Redshift scene, or it's just a very, very bright sunlight. So go to, back to my select mode, and then I'm gonna go to my directional light and bring down the intensity just a bit, or there's something happening. What is this guy? Aha, there are these extra bits from the redshift file. So delete those guys. And now I realize that this guy is still a uh, gray texture. And I want to swap that out with a stone texture or just something different. So I'm going to go to my mega scans surfaces. What do I have? I have the tundra stone. I have the forest floor. What if I go to my bridge and then add a mossy rock sure so i have it highest quality downloaded click add and then unreal engine is going to prepare the textures and then mossy rock ground drag that on you know that's actually not landing the way i want to i'm going to go back with my original thing that i was doing go to my content folder starter content and materials and let's try the brushed metal Ooh, that looks good that looks real good i'm happy with that Ooh, that's fun now you have this really heavy metal pug in the middle of the forest i'd say that looks pretty cool now from here i really want to start dialing in the lighting a little bit more it's some parts are blown out some parts are not i really want to bring some extra detail to this so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to start playing with my directional light. I'm gonna bring up the volumetric scattering intensity and bring that up by a lot. And that's creating a much foggier look in my scene, bringing the background out just a little bit more, bring up the indirect lighting intensity, and that's actually blowing it out a little bit, so I'm not gonna to touch that. But what I am gonna do is scroll down to the light shaft occlusion, check that on, light shaft bloom, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my ray tracing. I'm getting a little bit of noise in here. So if I set my samples per pixel to like 16, 
that clears it up by a lot. These shadows are a little soft for me. So what I'm going to do is go to my shadow source angle factor and set this to 0.1. And we're going to get a lot more detail in that shadow. Now it does look a little harsh now. So I'm going to set this to maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Basically, what this is doing is this is softening or hardening those shadows. Um, maybe one was fine. Let's go with 0.8. That looks really nice for me. Obviously, this character is way blown out still. So we're going to go to our post-process volume. And then we're going to go to our lens flare. And in our lens flare, we can turn that on. We can actually set it off. And we're going to go to our bokeh size. And I'm going to crank this up by a lot. So now if we crank up the, uh, the intensity of the lens flare, we're getting uh, a much larger sort of flare. So it's kind of like a, like a glint rather than like a, a straight flare. I personally think that the Unreal Engine lens flare looks good, but you can definitely get a better look out of something natural from a real camera. So it does look a little artificial, but that's okay. This is looking really cool for me. Now, obviously it's not perfect and I've been doing this for a, quite a long time in a tutorial. So I could spend a very, very long time lighting this scene. But what's really cool about all of this is that it's all real time. So I can move around my lighting and play with the way this is gonna look. Now, the last thing I really wanna do is dial in some of the render settings in the post-process volume. Now we're not gonna go into rendering in this video, but what I am gonna do is scroll down and I have my global illumination and reflection methods. Right now it's set to lumen, so um, I can just play and see what happens if I do ray tracing and that's going to destroy it because we're using different assets with different settings that actually play better into lumen. So we'll just keep this at lumen. I often will just turn on the ray trace reflections just to see what happens and it makes it look gross so sometimes lumen will just look better and then what i'm going to do is go into my exposure settings and i really want to bring this down a little bit so we're not getting that harsh of a highlight in that one spot so i'll set the exposure compensation to two now my biggest issue is that i wish that these characters the the stone and the pug actually had a little bit more light so the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my place actors panel and i'm going to add a rectangular light so i'm going to search up rec find rectangular light i'm going to leave my redshift camera and i'm going to actually position this in my scene right in front of these guys here and this is going to help me bring a little bit more intensity and attention to my main character my main assets here now if i go through my camera the light that's in the scene that we're adding is a very cool light it's it's very white and the rest of the lights in the scene are very warm so i'm going to change my temperature I'm gonna actually check the temperature just because I like using temperature. I could change the light color if I want to, but I prefer working with temperature instead. And if I bring this to a lower value, it's gonna warm it up a lot more, just help with the, the overall color grade. And I'm putting the rectangular light in the position or like in the general direction of the directional light so that it's sort of complementing the directional light. I don't want to put it so far off in place so it would look unnatural. So if I were to crank up this intensity a little bit, we're getting a little bit more detail there. And now I'm going to go to my directional light. And if I hold control and then tilde on my keyboard, I can change the rotation axis and I can just start moving this around a little bit just to get a little bit more side light. And we're definitely losing that stone there. So now what I want to do is I want to go into my rectangular light over here. And I want to bring another one out. So if I hold Alt on my keyboard, it will duplicate an object if I move it. So now we have a second rectangular light here. And I can hit E on my keyboard to go to my rotation tool. And then move this around and push 
this over just a little bit. I'm going to bring down the intensity to like four. I want the light to be incredibly subtle to bring a little bit more detail into that stone here, but not so much that it's going to make it look gross. Now, this first rectangular light I have up here, we're getting that really harsh hot spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my position and just push it up just a little bit and then bring up the intensity. And then I want to put this above the character. So I'm gonna go back, bring it up, point it down, and then bring it a little bit more on top. And this is just adding a little bit of fill. And now I can see here, I'm getting a really harsh shadow under the pug here. So the biggest thing with lighting is a smaller light is gonna give you more harsh shadow. So if I bring this to let's say 150, 150, that'll soften up that shadow a lot. And let's try maybe 300. And I'm just bringing the light source width and height to be much larger so that that shadow is much softer and that's a much better look that i'm looking for now i'm realizing that this uh texture is still very bright so i'm going to double click on my burnished steel in the texture and then i know there's some scary nodes here and we'll talk about this in another video but what i really want to do is just bring down the uh, intensity of this roughness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe set this to like, so I'm just gonna go through this really quick. Let's just say 0.5 and then save that. And that's definitely looking a lot softer now. It's still really, really bright. So I could just start dialing this in, but I don't wanna bore you with that. Overall, the, I feel that this is a really good recreation of that scene within an hour. Obviously, I could spend a lot more time dialing this in. I know I covered a lot in this video, but the goal here was to really show that you can take something that's really cool in cinema and bring it into Unreal. And they're definitely going to have different looks. Redshift is great, and if you really had the time to dial in render settings and let something render for a very, very long time, you're going to get an amazing look. While with Unreal, you can really really take the time and get something that looks awesome and have it render in real time as well. Or you could even do some path tracing in Unreal. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. And overall, I think that the content here uh, will hopefully get you started in using Unreal and thinking about what render engine should I use for my project. Now I'm going to take a couple moments and dial in the settings just a little bit more and then we'll wrap up this video. So after about 10 minutes, I finished dialing in the scene the way I wanted it to, and this is what the final look is. I really hope you learned something from this super long tutorial. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, or if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well. Thank you again, EJ, for sharing your scene with me and showing me some really cool composition and lighting things in Redshift. I learned a ton and I am grateful that you allowed me to bring this into Unreal and challenge me with uh, trying to recreate the scene as best I could. Hope it turned out well. And I will leave you, as in the viewer, with one final tip, and that is eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you'll make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.